This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol, and men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Uranus must be a very dull planet. All the rock samples I've examined are quite normal. Try some of these. Where are they found? In the Uranus polar region. And Bigara, it's so hot in here, we might as well be there now. Hot poles and cold equators. Everything on Uranus is upside down, just like your inventions. See what I mean? This leak keeps falling over. It isn't a leak. It's a plant from Uranus. Well, it looks like a leak. It's getting hotter. The air conditioner's out of order. Do you ever know such a thing? The scientific headquarters of the United Galactic Organization, and we can't get the air conditioning to work properly. Well, that's life for you, Pop. There, how careless you are. You've knocked the plant over again. I didn't touch it. Well, it didn't get there by itself. Pick it up, pick it up. Most interesting. This rock sample is highly radioactive. Can we date it? Mm, at the quick calculation, I'd say the radioactivity dates back uh, 4,000 years. 4,000 years? Perhaps there was an atomic war on Uranus. It is unscientific to make such wild guesses. It's the Irish in me. Now, how did that get there? What? This plant. You keep throwing it out. I haven't touched it. What a girl you are for putting the blame on your father. I don't think much of your substitute cow. You will when it's finished. Artificial beef. And as much of it as you want. I suppose you remember that two years ago, we lost 20 men and a space freighter on Uranus. They just disappeared, didn't they? Yes. Well, I sent an expedition out there to see if they could find the wreckage. But all they discovered was the empty freighter and no sign of the men. Maybe they got lost in the jungle and died of starvation. We'd have still found their bones. But these men have vanished. Any wild animals on Uranus, Colonel Rayburn? There's no advanced form of life there, whatever. Only plants. Well, plants couldn't have killed 20 men. I wish you'd send me to Uranus, Colonel. Mm, I can't spare you. The round trip would take six months. There. That's the last rock examined. I'll take my report and send it to Colonel Rayburn. Have you tested the two rocks over there? No. But why did you move them? You've no right to touch the samples. I put them on the plant to stop it from falling over. Well, give the rocks to me. Hurry now. It's gone again. Where can it be? What's gone? The plant. Ah, there it is. Oh. What's the matter? It scratched me. Not on your life. But it did scratch me. Then bathe your hand in ultraviolet rays. It might be poisonous. Dear, dear, dear. Women in a lab are more bother than they're worth. I'm as germ-free as a... Oh, the leak moved. Nonsense. It did. Look at it. You need a rest, me child. But it's true. There. It moved again. If you're joking... I'm not. Every time we stop looking at it, it walks. There. It did it again. Turn your head quickly. <laughs> You're right. It did move. It can't be a plant. It doesn't move when we're watching it. Maybe it doesn't want us to know what it's doing. Then it must have some sort of a brain. Like a dog or a cat? Even more intelligent. It can't be human. It certainly isn't an ordinary vegetable. We'd better ask the biological department to test its electrical impulses. Oh, dear. The poor thing's scared. It probably doesn't like noise. I won't let you send it to be cut up. 
Trust a woman to get emotional. Very well, I'll do the experiment myself. How? I'll cut one of its tendrils. I won't let you. How would you like to have one of your tendrils cut off? You can't compare your father to a vegetable. Come, come, give it to me. I promise not to hurt it. I'll just prick one of the tendrils very gently. I can't bear to watch. Then look at the dials instead. The electric impulses are terrifically strong. Mm, it certainly feels pain. Look at it struggling. It thinks you're going to hurt it again. I'll take it out. Wait a minute. While it's in the machine, let's test it for speech. It can't talk. We haven't heard a peep out of it. We can't hear bats, yet they talk. Even dogs hear sounds we can't. Switch on the ultrasonic recorder. Hurry up, it's struggling. It's on now. There we are. I'll prick it gently. You should see the needle. 90,000 sound cycles. Then it has got a voice. Let me take it out now. I'm sure it's scared. I'll play back the recording on a step-down tape. Then we'll be able to hear it. There, there. No one's going to hurt you anymore. Listen to this. It must have made those yelps when you pricked it. Do you know what this means? We're the first human beings to meet a walking, talking vegetable. A walking, talking vegetable? <laughs> Sometimes I think Professor Haggerty should take a long trip to the Emerald Isle. Yes, Colonel Rayburn? I asked Captain Dart to come and see me. Why isn't he here? He's on his way, Colonel. Ah, Dart. I've been waiting for you. I suppose that means I'm going on a mission. Yes. Down to Professor Haggerty's lab. Marla, is my monobile ready? It is downstairs, waiting for you. Come on, Dart. I'll tell you the story on the way. So this plant that Professor Haggerty examined comes from Uranus? Yes. And it talks? Yes. We're trying to get it decoded. I can't wait to hear the translation. So this is your talking vegetable. Unfortunately, the decoding computer can't translate what is said. I'm not surprised. My daughter feels the plant is too young to speak properly. You mean the recording you've taped might be the sounds a baby makes? Exactly. Well, then we'll have to wait for the plant to grow up. If it grows up without hearing grown-up plants talk, its speech will remain babyish. Take it out of the pot. That isn't stopping it. The pot contains Uranus soil. We thought the plant was dying for lack of food. That's why we put it in there. If it wanted to walk, it could easily step out. Where were you the first time it took a stroll? Here. I was looking at the air conditioner. It was out of order and terribly hot. 78 degrees. Disgraceful. 78 degrees? That's the summer temperature at the Uranus Pole. Professor Haggerty, if you want that plant to walk again, turn up the heat. Be jabers. Why didn't I think of that myself? Don't blame me if I'm wrong. You aren't wrong, Dart. And you've talked yourself into another mission. Uranus? Yes. I want you to bring back some larger plants. Why? If their speech can be decoded, Maybe we'll learn what happened to the 20 men we lost on Uranus. Wonder why Dart is away so long. No doubt Colonel Rayburn is getting ready to send us on a new mission. I wish the Colonel would send us on leave instead. I'm getting homesick for Mars. And I am desirous to visit Venus again. I'm afraid you'll both have to wait for that leave you were talking about. We must prepare for takeoff at once. Where are we going? To Uranus. What for, Captain? There's nothing on that planet. Rayburn wants us to bring back some plants for him. Plants? 
Don't tell me he's getting interested in gardening. Uh, these are special plants, Husky. Now, come on, let's go. You check off first, Slim. Galaxia 024 calling Central Control. Closing inner vacuum door. Central Control to Galasphere 024. Inner vacuum door now closed. Primary drive functioning. Check. Orbital drive on. Check. Interplanetary overdrive on. Everything's ready, Captain. Fine. Husky? Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Scan of you are working. Check. Astro beam working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. All in order, Captain. I'm ready. Thanks. Galasphere 024 to central control. Ready for final check. Automatic course control on. Check. Gravity freezing cabin, on. Check. Mesen power, on. All in order. Ready to lift. Takeoff program starting now. Strange to think that this plant's just a baby. Now, don't start getting motherly about it, or you'll be wanting to take it home. Of course I want to take it home, Pop. Well, you can't. It's got to stay right here, and don't call me Pop. But why can't I take it home? Because it might be dangerous. That's what Larry Dart's gone to Uranus to find out. Wonderful to wake up again. Are we near Uranus yet, Captain? I'll go and check. How long have we been in the freezer, Slim? Eighty-six days. No wonder I feel hungry. In the freezer, your degenerative processes are halted. You cannot be hungry. It is only imagination. It isn't my imagination that's rumbling. It's my stomach. Galasphere 347 calling Earth on the sonar beam. Come in, please. Colonel Rayburn here. Over. We're 200,000 miles from Uranus. We should be approaching the planet in half an hour. When you land, make sure it's safe to leave the galosphere. If there's any forget the plants and return to Earth. Over and out. Take your positions, boys. We're nearly there. See if you can get Uranus on the video screen, will you, Husky? It's coming up now. Switch off primary drive, Slim. Primary drive? Off. Slow speed to minimum. Speed cut to minimum. Prepare to go into orbit. Our speed is now 3,000 miles an hour. We've got to be slower than that. Speed now 1,500 miles an hour. Right. I'm switching to robot control. Prepare for landing. From the look outside, the vegetation is fantasticatious. There is no such word, but I comprehend your meaning. Why is everything so big? The radioactive fallout caused a genetic change in the growth of everything. What's a genetic change? What slim means is that radioactivity affects the way the cells in your body grow. This vegetation's been affected all right. What do we do now? Collect some big plants and leave. I hope you will let me accompany you outside. You know the rules, Slim. The galosphere must never be left unattended. But it will be perfectly safe. The planet is uninhabited. Well, come outside for a quick look, then. Don't forget your space helmets. The air is poisonous.
My equipment feels the same as usual. The gravity here isn't too different from Earth. It is very warm. I'm not warm. What's cool for a Venusian is hot for a Martian. Where are the leaks? Over there, I hope. Captain, your assumption is correct. Hackety's daughter was right. Their leak was only a baby. If those are leaks, I would like to see a turnip. I am going to explore further. I'll feel happier if you're in the Gallosphere. As you wish, Captain. Slim always does what you ask him. Venusians always obey, not like some Martians I know. <laughs> Sorry, Captain. I try to listen to you. I don't like the look of these leaks. They keep moving all the time. The sooner we take off from here, the better. That sounds like Slim. Help! Save me! I'm being strangled! Dad! Come quickly! Help! Help! I can't see you, Slim. The plants are in the way. I'm here! Where? Here! Keep calling and I'll follow your voice. Don't come too close or they'll get you! Be careful, Captain! They're a regular reception committee. What strength they've got. Try to get away from get me. Get back, Husky. That's dangerous. We can't leave Slim. They'll kill him. I tried to reach him, but it was hopeless. I can't get past those brutes. I won't let them kill Slim. Husky, wait. I'm going back to the Gallosphere for the laser gun. It'll be too late. Get away, Husky. You must not risk your life. I won't leave you with these creatures. Ah, that's finished him. And the other ones run away. <laughs> there is nothing to laugh at. I am sure it has gone to get help. We'd better not wait around. Come on. This one has some strength, all right. You won't be able to free me. It's tightening its grip. The brute. The, uh, there. What a relief to be free. Let's get going. There are hundreds of leaks coming after us. We must tell Dot not to come back. Do not leave the galaxy, Captain. We are returning at once. Do not leave the Galasphere, Captain. I've got the gun. There are too many of these plants. We will never kill them all. Slim, press the buzzer as soon as you and Husky come through the outer vacuum door. Have we far to go, Husky? No. C can you move faster? Those leaks are gaining on us. Come on, Slim. Faster. I can't. I am too tired. It's only a few more yards to go and we'll be safe. You are a good friend. Save your breath for running. I'll give them five more seconds and then I'm going after them. They've made it. Takeoff program starting now. What a relief to leave this plant. Speed, 5,000 miles an hour riding. 
Automatic course control on. And switching to robot control. Uranus is one planet I intend to erase from my travel itinerary. Me too. I've eaten plenty of leeks for dinner, but on Uranus, I nearly ended up at a dinner for a leak. I'll call Rayburn. Galosphere 347, calling Space Headquarters, Earth. Captain Dart is calling you on the solar beam. Put him on the video screen. We weren't able to get the plants, Colonel. They started to attack us, and we just managed to escape with our lives. As long as you and your crew are safe, that's the main thing. But at least we know what happened to those 20 men. We certainly do. Those plants devoured them. Did you manage to get an ultrasonic recording of their speech? Yes, Colonel. Good. We'll get it decoded. Then the next space patrolmen who go to Uranus will be able to talk to them and make friends with them. Over and out. I wouldn't fancy trying to make friends with those plants. In their own way, they might be as advanced as we are. If those leeks are advanced, I'm an onion. Talking of onions, I could do with some soup. You can dream about soup when we're in the freezer. Come on, you two. Let's get going. Mm -hmm. 